There he is. Got him. Coming up on this episode of the New Fly Fisher, we're in Island Park, Idaho, DIY, doing it ourselves on Henry's Lake and all the tributaries in and around Island Park. This big fish adventure starts right now on the New Fly Fisher. Come on, get in the net, you little donkey. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Welcome to Island Park, Idaho, a wonderful little city in Yellowstone Teton territory in eastern Idaho. Island Park sits at the base of Sawtell Peak and Mount Jefferson and is home to the world famous Henry's Lake Stillwater Fishery and of course, Island Park Reservoir. We're in Island Park as guests of good friend Mike Wilson of Drift Lodge and Fly Shop. Mike has invited me here for two reasons. Number one, to experience the world-class fishing in the area as a do-it-yourself fishery. And number two, to meet and fish with Hall of Fame surfboard shaper and excellent angler Al Merrick. Mike didn't have to ask me twice. There is a vast variety of angling opportunities in the Island Park area, including small stream trout fishing access to Yellowstone National Park, the Henry's Fork of the Snake River, and of course, Henry's Lake itself. I've fished this area in the past, always with a guide. I begin this island park adventure as every DIY angler should, hitting the local fly shop, picking up some local fly patterns, and of course, some local knowledge. When you're doing things yourself, it's really important to cut down the amount of information that you uh, have out there. And one of the great ways to do that is to go and visit a local fly shop. Go in, buy some flies, ask the proper questions, and they'll help narrow down where to go and what to use. I jump in the car and head to a small creek in the area. I went in to the fly shop and asked some advice. And because it's September and it's, you know, mid-morning, um, they recommend that we start off with a hopper dropper system. So I'm gonna do just that. I've got one already tied up. There's no use in getting out at the crack of dawn when, this, when it's cold at night, hovering around freezing, and uh, those fish are really lethargic and really sort of quiet. So, you know, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, have a nice breakfast and Throw some hopper droppers once things warm up. Small creeks like this are very sensitive to pressure and it goes without saying we're respecting the lodge's request for catch and release, as always. This creek sees many trout species including cutthroat, rainbow, and brook trout. It fishes just like any small stream, intimate, quiet, and stealthy. One of the things that's great about hunting small streams is it's just that, it's hunting. You've got to watch your steps, you've got to watch your shadows, you've got to watch your shadow from not only your person, but your rod and your fly line. So stealth is a key. Stand back a bit, know where those fish are going to be lying, place that perfect cast and get ready to dance. Highest percentage areas underneath overhangs, dark banks. If you can get it as tight as you can, you'll have a great shot at those fish coming out and grabbing your fly. This one ate the nymph as well. Little rainbow. Oops. I don't even think I need the net on this guy. I just hand bomb them. Keep them in the water. There 
go. Great little fish. Awesome, awesome little rainbow. It pops out and away it goes. This is no fun at all. You gotta be ready when fishing small stream cutthroat. Um, generally, your first cast is your best cast. Um, so when you're ready to, to lay one in there, you gotta be ready to do the dance right away because it could happen immediately just like that. Ooh, good fish. Really good. Oh, this is a beautiful cutthroat. Took the nymph. We're fishing a hopper dropper system today. You stay out of there, please. Oh my goodness, this five weight is working out. Come on, buddy. Stick with me, pal. In small streams, it does not get any better than this. Absolutely amazing. Skinny, skinny water, big, fat cutthroat. Pop out that little, it's actually a jig, a jig nymph. It's got a tungsten head and a little bit of blue flash, 18 inches underneath the ant. Took this absolute stud of a cutthroat in a small stream doesn't get better than that. All right, let's let this big girl go. The powers of observation are vital in fly fishing. Case in point, I was walking back to the truck and I saw a couple of fish eating off the surface where I thought there shouldn't be fish at all. I don't know what they're eating, but what's interesting about this is that we have a current that's actually going this way and a wind that's blowing upstream. So with the setup I've got, the Chernobyl ant and the nymph, though it looks like everything's flowing this way, the current is actually pushing everything that way against the waves, causing the nymph to undulate and it's driving these fish crazy. Check this out. There's a better fish. It's the powers of observation. The wind's kicked up. There's still grasshoppers in the, in the fields. So throw what they're eating. If there's grasshoppers on the water, if there's a chance there's grasshoppers on the water, have at it and have some fun. They may not be the biggest fish in the world, but when you can take them on dry flies, it is fantastic. There he goes, just like that. Get the nymph out of me and go back up in there. I approach an irrigation diversion and see a red streak slashing through the pool. So I change my rig to a streamer immediately. Always oh, gonna eat it, dude. He's gonna eat it. Chasing it. Got him. Oh my gosh, can you believe this? This is unbelievable. We're in this irrigation. Oh, this is so much fun. In this irrigation ditch, and I put my polarized glasses on, and I see this red thing in the water, and it's a salmon. It's a kokanee salmon. Where's my net? I've never even seen one of these, let alone had an opportunity to fish them. I'm a disaster right now. I go down and net this guy. There are kokanee in Island Park Reservoir. 
Yes, are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me right now? Oh my goodness. So I had a hopper and a nymph on. Let me catch my breath. Saw this red dash ripping around in this pool. Uh, put on a black bead-headed leech and he ate it. He actually ate it. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> this is insane. All right, what an absolute thrill. Let's let this guy go. You know, it's these moments in this sport that absolutely leave you gobsmacked. I've never even seen a kokanee salmon before, and to be able to catch one here in Idaho, unbelievable. Absolutely, fantastically spectacular. Drift Lodge and Fly Shop is located right on Idaho's artery to access for anglers, the famous Highway 20, just a few short miles from the Montana border and the west gate of Yellowstone National Park. The lodge has a variety of extremely economical lodging options to choose from, including a large house for bigger groups to smaller cabins, perfect for couples or you and your fishing buddy. Regardless, whatever suits your style, all cabins are extremely comfortable with Wi-Fi, full kitchens, full power, and satellite television should you want. The lodge is a housekeeping lodge, so you can come and go at your leisure and eat when you like. Today, we're splitting our day between Yellowstone National Park and a drive-to access of the Henry's Fork. We start on the Henry's Fork, and I try a relatively new technique to me, tight line nymphing. One of the things that I absolutely love about fishing in Yellowstone Teton territory, specifically the Island Park region, is the fact that there are so many rivers and creeks where you can do it yourself, DIY. All you have to do is drop into a fly shop, pick up some flies, ask the right questions, and they can help you and guide you to rivers like this. This is a section of the Henry's Fork that we're gonna fish today. Hopefully, we're gonna find some fish. There's a fish, little guy. I tell you, this is such a, an effective technique because you can literally pick apart every single micro seam that you see on these rivers and in these, in these pools. Um, the trick is though, which is really bizarre, is that you actually have to lead your flies, which means your rod tip is below the, the level of where your flies are. And on a tight line, you're looking and feeling for any kind of bump. Oops, there it goes. And, um, you know, you step in here, you can pick apart a, a pool and, um, you know, something that you may catch one or two fish with an indicator. I mean, you can really, really pick it apart and see some great success with this technique. What I'm doing here is I'm casting upstream with this double fly rig and on a tight line, I'm two handed fishing it down, leading with my rod tip so that I'm literally cutting through this water, managing my slack with my other hand. Lots of anglers do one hand, right? And they will raise it up, but not managing their slack, okay? With a two hand technique, you can place it, raise it up, find the bottom, and then fish it all the way down. Now, when you get a good drift, and we'll drift that you're happy with, you can actually lower your rod tip and swing it. And there's a fish right there, just like that. Little guy, but hey, if it fooled a little one, it's gonna fool a big one too. There we go, quick release. Little trout. This is such an effective technique for picking up fish. It's absolutely amazing. And the thing is, is that you know, we've been told when you're indicator fishing to always go with the speed of the bubbles. Let your, let your flies go with the speed of the currents. Well, this, 
you're actually looking for your flies to go two to three times slower than the, than the speed of the current. So that's why you're leading your flies, is that you're actually controlling the, the nymph as it bounces down, you know, that far off the bottom. Um, and it's right in the strike zone of, of rainbows. We've been catching little ones today, but they're big ones here for sure. Little pheasant tail, beadhead pheasant tail. With a little pink in it. They're feisty. And when you're learning a new technique like I am with urinymphing, it is a great, great thing to be able to see success of any kind. Even if they're little, they still play. All right, well, I'm buttoning them. Send them on his way. We've got five pound tippet on here, so you gotta be careful and you gotta play the big ones when you get them. On a light line, hook just pops right out. This little guy gets to go and grow up. Amazing, so fun. I am a fan of this technique for sure. I just can't wait to get a big one. There we go. Another little trout, another little rainbow. So good. Ooh, they're active. <laughs> All right, let me run through the rod setup I've got here. This is an 11 foot three weight rod paired with a large rubber reel. It's got a Euro nymphing three weight line. It's super thin diameter. To that, we have attached our leader, which is 22 feet of monofilament followed by a small section of cider material with the tags left on. And then we have probably five and a half or six and a half um, feet of five pound tippet. To that, we have a fly hanging off of the tippet. And then we're actually drop shotting this, uh, this pheasant tail, beadhead pheasant tail with uh, two pieces of BB. So that's the setup that we've got for catching these little trout. It's super fun. I'm brand new to urine nymphing, and I'm here to tell you, I'll do it again for sure. There's so much to learn. There we go, another little guy. Man, oh man. This is such an effective technique. I bet you dollars to donuts if I had come through here with a traditional indicator rig, a couple of nymphs, nymphs underneath, we would not have seen the fish that we've seen today. You know, we've jumped off a lot of fish that, you know, probably my fault, but to be able to hone your skills catching wild fish, it's just incredible. To do it yourself, Euro nymphing on the Henry's Fork to catch a lot of little fish. We didn't get any big ones, but that's okay because you know what? The little ones are here, the big ones are here. Just wasn't my lucky day, but what a fantastic technique. What a great way to come into a new piece of water as directed by the lodge and uh, have a fantastic couple of hours. After a fun morning on the Henry's Fork, I pick up and head north to Yellowstone National Park. To fish Yellowstone National Park, you need to have a park pass and a license. A state-issued angler's license isn't suitable enough. You need a park license to fish within the boundaries. There is a multitude of angling opportunities within the park boundaries, including famous rivers such as the Gallatin, the Madison, Snake, and Yellowstone River itself. Today, we are fishing a small tributary of the Madison, just a short walk from the car park. Make sure you bring your camera and bear spray too. There's wildlife everywhere.
Drift Lodge has a very well-appointed fly shop right on site should you need pretty near anything while in the area. From flies and lines to clothing and licenses, the experts at the shop have you covered. If DIY isn't your thing, guiding is available for single anglers or pairs. Their guides are dialed in to the still water, rivers, and creeks in the area. We weren't even in the truck for 10 minutes driving to the Henry's Fork here. It's public walk and wait access. It's absolutely perfect for those who want to DIY. We are loaded up with a hopper and a dropper in search of cutthroat, rainbows, and maybe even a brook trout. Little guy. Baby rainbow on the nymph. Good sign of a healthy fishery right there. That's awesome. Here's a little fish. Now, there are fish that go in excess of 20 inches in here. This guy is not one of those, but that's all right, because that is 100% fun. Awesome. See you, dude. go on the dry a little better fish this time but if you look at where we are whoa I mean you just you can't beat it it's absolutely fantastic just beautiful he came up to eat the dry at least I thought he did but it looks like he's got the nymph in his mouth Come back to me, there we go. Nice little 10 inch rainbow. Nymph right in there. Fun fish, they're getting bigger. They sure are. All right, bud, thanks. This evening here on the Henry's Fork, I'm, um, I'm working my way upstream. And I've actually got three pieces of structure that I'm fishing as I'm methodically moving up. I've got this set of logs over on my left that are creating their own seams and their own pieces of structure, as well as being structure themselves. Then I've got a deeper area in the middle, which might hold some fish. But what I'm really excited about is the rock that's directly ahead of me and the two seams that it's throwing on either side of it. So as I take a couple steps up, I'll put this chubby Chernobyl into each piece of structure two, three, take another couple steps up, one, two, three, effectively covering all the water. Always keeping an eye on the chubby because I do have two titanium uh, nymphs on underneath this. So let's see what happens. All right, we got ourselves a good one here. It ate the ant, it ate the Chernobyl. I'm gonna get this guy in the reel. It's a big one, it's a big rainbow. I can see him. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Come on, buddy. Right out in the middle of this flat, there's a rock up here that is throwing two seams off. And uh, I'm fishing up to the rock, hitting each seam as I move up. And this guy came up and just whacked it. I'm gonna move him into the shallow water here. Never mind, I gotta rope him. Woohoo! good rainbow, man. 
What a good fish. Wild places and unreal rainbow trout. I'm just gonna get these flies out of here so I don't stick myself or stick this rainbow. Now there is a dr double dropper on this, so I have to be careful. And then I will show you what we're dealing with here. All right. How do you like that? Good fish on a Chernobyl ant. Cannot beat it, just incredible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. They started small and they slowly getting bigger. I'll take that all day long. Equipment for this Yellowstone Teton Territory adventure out of Drift Lodge and Fly Shop is as follows. We were fishing five and six weight, nine foot fly rods matched with five and six weight, weight forward floating lines. Leaders were nine to 12 foot tapered 3X leaders matched with four and 5X tippet for terrestrials and dry flies. It's our final day fishing out of Drift Lodge and Fly Shop. What's a trip to Island Park without taking a day to fish the Henry's Lake? We meet up with Hall of Fame surfboard shaper and Island Park resident, Al Merrick. And of course, lodge owner, Mike Wilson. Welcome to Henry's Lake in Eastern Idaho. It's one of my favorite places to fish. And today we're fortunate enough to be able to fish with um, a legend, actually, a, uh, a Hall of Fame surfer and uh, all around great guy who loves to fish in the era, Al Merrick. Oh, that was right. There's a certain piece about it. You're doing it yourself. And surfing's much like that. You go out in the water and you're in a, a beautiful environment trying to catch waves that are just naturally produced. I just love the challenge of it. I like the challenge that this lake presents, and all fly fishing really, but in that respect, it was much like making surfboards, or is much like making surfboards, is that it offers you the challenge, uh, something to overcome, something to get better, and something to always learn. There we go. Fish on. I really didn't let it sink at all. Really? No. Maybe I'm below him then, Al. You might be. I think I got below him too. Yeah, I didn't even uh, sink at all. I just started stripping. What's this fly represented? You think it's a chub fly or leech? Right, right. How'd it hit? Did it just clobber it? Yeah, it hit good. Yeah. So it's cold. It's actually freezing. It's just above freezing. And um, I have found that as things cool down, my fingers slow down a lot. Um, and I've got to make a fly change. Uh, so one of the ways that I have been taught how to, how to effectively tie a clinch knot without actually doing it the way that I usually do it is really quite simple. You take your fly, you thread it, you hold both ends, and you twist the tag end, grab it, put it back through the loop, and you're done. Just like that. It's fast, effective, and when your hands and your fingers are freezing, you can actually tie your fly on Good. without wasting 10 minutes. I'll have you tie on some for me. <laughs> Fish. I was saying. Hey. 
threaten to change flies and there you go this fish was born like two hours ago awesome the baby but he ate the leech that feels good nice cutthroat Yeah, he whacked it. I, I figured, you know, we've had a couple of short strikes, right, Al? Yeah. I figured that I've missed a couple of fish. Thank you. Um, but there was no doubting that this guy absolutely hammered this fly. Thanks, dude. As far as surfing goes and fishing, the parallels, it's very close. When you're out there in the water and it's you and the waves and the serenity of it, the beauty of it, and just the challenge of it, I find all that in fishing too. I've surfed for so many years and I've fished for so many years, but in the end, fishing kind of wins out. Yeah. Nice fish, cutthroat. Yeah. <laughs> He's taking drag on you. <laughs> You've been fighting that heavy line all day. Whoop. Don't get around that anchor rope. Whoa, that was good. Stabbed him. <laughs> Got him. Good job, Al. Great fish. 19 inch? Yeah, 19. Nice looking fish. Awesome work. It's windy. The conditions are not ideal, but you know what? That guy will play, yeah. huh? All right, Al. I'll All give right. you the honors. Yep. Thank you, sir. Let's let him go. There he goes. Perfect. Perfect release. All right, we've come in to the, uh, near the launch, because it's been so windy with these sinking lines and it's paying off. Al just released one and now I got one on tap. These cutthroat are so fun to catch. He ate the golden retriever, nice. Nice work, Mike. So it's a hybrid, rainbow cutthroat cross. You can tell that it's got the, the pink of the rainbow on the cheeks and the definite slash. There, I'm gonna let this guy go. So let's take a look at the fly that we're using. So as a top fly, we've got the tried and true electric leech. And then I tied on a bead headed golden retriever, which is a leech pattern with a red body, yellow ribbing, and a golden retriever colored tail. And of course, the bead had to get it down. Well, that about does it for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. I want to thank Mike and Jamie Wilson from Drift Lodge and Fly Shop for everything. Al Merrick for his time, and of course, you for watching. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? For more on our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. And from everyone here at The New Fly Fisher, Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you in Yellowstone Teton Territory. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,